Hello and welcome to Comfort Legacies with Faye Michelle. Today we have our beautiful guest here, Jackie Fisher, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello and thank you for welcoming me on your show. My name is Jackie Fisher, so I am based in the UK and I am an author, poet, and I am an author of Thoughts of the Mind. So Thoughts of the Mind is a series of selection of poems and I've been writing poems since the age of eight. And my mantra is expressing emotions through words. So that's the basis of my poems. Every poem that has been created, if it's not through my own life experiences, it's through others' life experiences. Oh, excellent. Now that's a little bit of a twist. Usually people write according to their experiences. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, I, want, I would like to encourage and inspire individuals around the world to in, express their emotions through words. So uh, alongside the poetry that I, I create, I have also put together a business, J Poems. So J Poems is all about personalized poetry. And actually, you could say to me, I would like you to create a poem for a friend, a loved one, and you will tell me the memorabilia you'd like to go into that poem. And then I take your words and put it onto paper for you. So it's a one-off poetry for you, for that person. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's, that's awesome. So if I had a poem for my husband so to speak, what kind of, <laughs> he's just walking by. Um, so what kind of directions would you give me? So I would ask you about um, how you feel about him. What would you like in the poem in terms of memorabilia? You may have gone on maybe a honeymoon or a special date you went on and you will tell me bits about it. You don't have to go into full detail and I will capture what you've said to me and actually put it into a poem. So it is like a poem, when, once it's created, it's like a poem that you would have written for your husband. Wow. Now, how long does it take for you to do something like that? It takes, I give generally give about five to seven days to work on it. However, I can actually write a poem within a matter of 20, 30 minutes. How about so, three minutes? <laughs> uh, possibly. I've never been pushed to the test for three minutes, but, you, you know, I, I never say never. say never. So Okay. So get your pen ready. <laughs> okay. 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 This is fun. This. Yeah. It's, it, it'll be harder for me to come up with something to say. Let's see. Well, okay. let's see. <laughs> um, let's see. Carl. Okay. Husband. Yeah. 36 years of marriage. Mm. Um, let's see. Let's say 87 children fostering okay. and hmm, vacations. Okay, how many words? <laughs> um, that's that's fine. We've got Carl, husband. 36 years of bliss, uh, well, I put bliss, 36 years of bliss, you're still with him, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, okay, I, I, I would be remiss if I missed my three, three, our three children. Okay. Awesome. Three children. So you've had fostered 87. Wow. Yes, and, okay. and two adopted. That's it. Wow. Busy. Very busy. So yeah, I, busy. I mean, I would go along the lines of um, expressing how much you mean to him. Okay. You said, I've not jotted anything down. This is just coming from my head and my heart. Okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, Carl, you're a dear husband. You're my friend. You're my confidant. You're my soulmate. For the 37 years we've been together, you've inspired me. You've brought me love. You've been attentive and our marriage is bliss. We have a total of three children, 
and not forgetting our 87 foster children, including the two adopted. I love you dearly from the bottom of my heart and I cannot find the words to express my emotions to you and how you make me feel. I always remember the vacations we take and actually how many times we've taken those beautiful photos along the beach, those walks along the beach. And just one thing, Carl, my husband, my dear friend, my soulmate, I will love you for the rest of my life always eternally yours i have just taken that out of my head <laughs> now see you did that <laughs> that was good you did that in about two minutes <laughs> that's pretty good then that's it you put me on the spot and i i, I came and, and you did, delivered like, definitely definitely <laughs> That, that is that. awesome. And <laughs> while you were speaking, I was thinking of a picture while we were on the beach. Ah. And um, we were really young, at least I was. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a blanket around me because I'm always cold. And oh, I, we were walking along the beach and I had one of those big blankets before people started carrying blankets. I, I, I think I came up. <laughs> I may yeah. have invented it, but yeah, and I could see us walking through the sand on the beach. Lovely. See, Before I got that just, getting started. Yeah, and I just got that just from those few words you said. Had I had time, I could have put it together to make it rhyme, but poetry doesn't have to always rhyme. Poetry doesn't no. always rhyme. And Sentiment. I feel that Definitely. Something that's from the heart. And this is why it's so important when I create these personalized poems for individuals, they are definitely a one off. And actually, I get to kind of know them a little bit and what they feel for the other person that the poem poem is actually for. So, yes, I, I, I you just gave me a great idea. I mean, something like that. And I thought about the beach scene. There are now that was well before we started having children and had all of those other things going on. And so that's like a beginning of the poem. And then there's probably a beach picture or some um, vacation spot where we were all together <laughs> on oh, the beach. Yes. You know, with the family of kids. So yeah, that's that's really inspiring. That's awesome. So in your book, you just have how many types of poems do you have in your compilation? Okay, so or is I, it a book? It's it's a series of books. So the books are entitled Thoughts of the Mind, but each have subtitles. So the first book that's available is a selection of poems for a rainy day. So that consists of 22 poems. Uh, the, the second book is a selection of poems for children between the ages of six to 11, and that consists of 10 poems. And then it goes on with a selection of poems for teenagers. So I actually spoke to a group of teenagers and actually got some information and have had a conversation with them and then produced again another 10 poems. I then went on to creating a selection of poems for those who love. Those who love, those who want to be loved and those who can love. And that has a combination of 15 poems in there. And then dear to my heart is um, survivors of child abuse and childhood trauma. So actually, I have actually created a poem, a selection of poems for survivors of child abuse. Um, with that book, it's slightly different in terms of that. It has grounding techniques at the back of there and also support and advice for those individuals as well. And I'm hoping that that book actually inspires individuals who are looking to start their healing journey or are in the process of healing. And I'm hoping that book will find, um, inspire them to continue with their healing journey because with any type of trauma, not just childhood trauma, I find that the healing process, it doesn't have a time limit. Right. So it can be for the rest of your life, you know? Yeah. Um, so yes, it's just all about inspiring. I'm currently creating and further two subtitles, a selection of poems for motherhood, 
and a selection of poems for fatherhood. So I've spoken to mothers and fathers right across the globe and getting some perspective on what they would like to hear in these poetry books. So um, yes, that's that's those are those those uh, selection of subtitles that I have already. So when you write these poems, do you credit the people that you're talking to, or are they in the book, or do you just you know use their information? How do you go about that? So with the individuals that I'm speaking to, I generally dedicate the book to. So I've dedicated to the teenage. Te uh, the selection of poems for teenagers, it's dedicated for the, um, the teenagers and the new generation, yeah, the younger generation. So I will do that. And with the children, I, I, again, I go back onto social media and thank all the parents that have contributed. Um, because the poetry, the poetry book, is they're slightly different. And I would say they're slightly different because every poem has an affirmation a dedicated affirmation, those positive words. And then after the poem, there is a page for reflection, moments of emotion. Um, in the children's book, there is a page after each poem, just a question, how do you feel after reading Launchpad? And then part way down the page, it's encouraging them to create their own poem. So to inspire them to find and explore their inner poet. It doesn't stop there, the interaction. Everyone who has read, read the book or, or who will decide to read the books, they can then contact me via my website, my email address, and send in their thoughts and feelings, send in their poems, their masterpieces, and I will then put it on, with their permission, place it on my official website. So it's a constant interaction. Oh, wow. That is so awesome. We have to talk. So do you have a book with you? I do. Let me just, if I, if I may, I will pop and get this book. I've got a couple okay. of books. So this is the, can you see that? Thoughts yes. A selection of poem for a rainy day. And then this is the Thoughts of the Mind, a selection of poem for children. Okay. And... I have proofs of, because they are ready to go. This is the selection of poem for survivors of child abuse. And I have a selection of poems for teenagers and a selection of poems for those who love. So I, I, I actually, I, would, I, would you like me to share one of these poems in the- Yes, the, please. The, the <laughs> yes. So I, uh, shared today, uh, I have a poem here, and some of these poems have been inspired by personal events as well as other people. So, remember when the Black Lives Matters came about? Yeah. Everyone, everyone, every nation, every race was, you know, upset about it. Some people are still not understanding it. So, what I done was, um, this has an affirmation, as I said what you choose to see. So this affirmation is, how can we expect others to appreciate us if we don't appreciate ourselves? That is the affirmation for this. And then the poem, it's just a short poem. What you choose to see. On the surface, you choose to see my tone. When in reality, it's my armor you are looking at. The armor I have no choice but to wear with, with, which protects me from the rejection and inequality I endure. When I, see my, when I use my voice, you choose to hear aggression. When in reality, it's my expression. My expression of joy, my expression of disappointment, my expression of pain. I am no longer a slave where it is acceptable to suppress my feelings, my self-worth and my ability to be educated. I am no longer the property of man who would, wouldn't think twice about taking away the air that I am entitled to breathe. I continue to rise even with all I have endured. My rising is not always accepted. Instead, it is feared by many. 
Who I see is me. I am black. I am beautiful. I am proud. I am educated. I am ambitious. I am worthy. I am me. I love that. I love that. Yes. I love the, um, my tone is my armor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And, you know, the, the skin, black tone is definitely the armor. And as I said, what it is with every poem, every book, can you see that reflection page there? Uh, yes. So therefore, the readers have an option to start reflecting on how that poem has made them feel. Has it resonated with them? They can jot down and just, just express. So as I said, my mantra is expressing emotions through words. And that's what I'm encouraging and in trying to inspire individuals to do. Just express how you feel. And it's okay to express how you feel. You know? That is awesome. I love it. I love it. Now, can I get you to do one more for me? The one that's in the childhood trauma, because that's my, that's oh, my. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, I would love to. And, you know, no one has not read this one before. And I would say, look, it has a trigger warning. Okay. So there may be, there's, there, it says on there that this book contains some detailed accounts of child abuse. So if you're happy for me to choose one and read it. Yes. Okay. This one is called You Hurt Me. So the affirmation here is sometimes it is easier to forgive than forget. So all those nights when everyone was asleep, you did some terrible things to me which made me weep. It went on for far too long. The time came when I could take no more. My mind confused, my heart filled with fear and my body sore. I cried out for help and turned to my mum, not knowing what to say because I thought I had done something wrong. I thought you loved me, but not in that way. You're, you hurt me so badly, it was time for me to speak up and say. How could you do such things to me? And for so long, you were old enough to know better. You knew it was wrong. At night, I cry myself to sleep to take away the hurt, the anger, the pain. I know now that one of us was insane. You stripped me to, of my innocence, my childhood too. As long as I live, I shall condemn you. You have taken away a part of my life that cannot be replaced. I no longer walk with my head down low or feel disgrace. My life continues. Absolutely. I love that. Um, wow, that's deep expression. Yeah, what yeah. I like to do is I've interviewed a lot of authors and most of them write from that pain point. Mm. And often... It's a childhood trauma. So we've developed a course or a room where authors can come or anyone can come and tell their story. Right. And when you said that, um, good or bad, we're just there to affirm them, yeah. give them positivity, feedback. And mm -hmm. I thought that since you mentioned um, the poems and that expression, it might be... Um, someone might find some definite comfort in one of the poems. Definitely, so, definitely. And, and, and yeah. as I said, that's what I hope to, is not to, you know, we have triggers and I feel that okay. anyone who, who goes through trauma, regardless if it's childhood trauma or any other trauma, you have triggers. And yeah. I have sat down and spoken with my husband about, you know, childhood trauma. And he said, well, if that happened, something like that happened to me, I would want to just totally forget about it. So why would you want to then go and write about it? I said to him, what you've got to understand is for the rest of your life, that's going to be there. And there are going to be some triggers. It may be a smell. It may be something, someone has said something. Someone has, um, you know, there's an action. 
a place, a photo, and it will trigger that individual and take them right back there to that moment of that trauma happening. So I said, it's something that you're going to always live with. However, you going through your healing journey, you then are able to identify appropriate methods to deal with those moments when they arrive. And those moments are going to be different for everyone. So my yeah. techniques that I use may not be someone else's techniques they use. So that was the whole reason why I was inspired to write that book. Because again, it was dear to my heart. I, I you know, I'm, I'm healing. I'm still healing through childhood trauma and abuse. And that's why I chose to write that book to inspire others to support them with their healing or, or just encourage them to heal because there are many people who have suffered this type of trauma and they haven't even begun to start healing yet. Yes, absolutely. It seems as though every other person that I come into contact with has experienced some type of childhood trauma in that regard. So, um, and the passion to become more vocal about it is ever present. Uh, and so, yeah, it's almost like, uh, like you said, it is something that will always be there, you know? And so yeah. you can't rub it away or, or ignore it away. And like your husband said, to his point, there are those that want to just forget about it. But yeah. you clear about you clarified that up by saying there are triggers. And yeah. one such trigger that is in my mind is I was um, speaking to an author and reading her book. And it said that park bathrooms mm. is a true trigger for her. Yeah. And I mean, not only trigger, I mean, it just take you right back there to the moment. But, you know, when you're out and, you know, you may be at an amusement park and you want to you have to stop. And and then she, she makes sure that there's someone standing outside at all time. You can't leave. And so and that's something that someone might say, you know, what? Just go. Just go. And she's like, yeah. no, you know, I want someone here standing here. Do not leave until I come back out, you yeah. know. Yeah. Just so just think about how many times I like here in the U.S. just driving down the road, stopping at a convenience store or, you know, the gas station where the uh, bathrooms are on the side of the building or something like that. And you have to take a key. There's you know, there's so many. It could just be going to a restroom, period. That's yes. every day, all day of your life. You know? There you go. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. You know, so, how many times during the day, you know, can it, it trigger a memory? So definitely. absolutely. Um, and having a space for them to be able to um, reflect mm. or not, or just know that someone hears them. I think that that's one of the most important aspects of what you're doing definitely. is providing that space for them to be heard yeah. and not just dismiss and say, well, just forget about it. It was a long time ago. Yes. Yeah. I, I think I feel when people make a statement like that, they don't understand. No. Um, I, I, I understand that they don't understand because they they've not been through something like that. I wouldn't say the same because everyone absolutely experiences they don't understand and they probably ca cannot comprehend. And exactly like my husband said, if something like that happened to me, I would want to forget about it. Yeah. Um, and so do, so does, so does anyone who's gone through it. <laughs> Unfortunately, <definitely. laughs> you know, you kind of get that opportunity. I mean, it's like you said, I, I love that triggers. Triggers yeah. is a good word, you know, and it's yeah. almost like a new story for like what triggers me, you know. Yeah, definitely. And it's about it, it's about exploring it because again, as I said, everyone will be on their own journey. And I always say to individuals that don't put a time limit on your healing journey. Yes, yeah. It could be the rest of your life that you are going to heal. 
it's never going to be forgotten about. And particularly if you do have triggers, the triggers are going to always be around you within your environment, in, even in your home where you feel mm. safe, there may be triggers. So it's about being able to find appropriate methods how to deal with those triggers and how do you try and bring your back bring yourself back down to the reality because the reality is now oh you know? yeah the reality yeah. is now so it's about finding those methods to you know bring it back down bring back down to reality wow well i i think that it's just a subject matter that just needs to be explored and and continued uh, working on, uh, you know, like you like you're doing. It's just um, the science behind that can go on forever and ever. You know? Definitely, definitely. I, I want I want people to feel safe. I mean, I'm a, I'm I am actually starting a podcast, a Thoughts of the Mind podcast, and it's going to have similar ethos around the books where listeners can interact. Wow. So uh, it's starting on the 31st of May. The first episode is out on the 31st of May. It's going to be on Apple, Spotify, and I've managed to upload it on YouTube. So I'm hoping when I push the button, it works. Um, so the podcast will explore a range of subject matters. And some of those subject matters are going to be subject matters that society, people within society across the globe, shy away from discussing things like mental health. You know, yeah. it was so, I was so taken back when I spoke to a group of teenagers and asked them the question, what's the topic? What's the talking topic with you young people nowadays? What would you, you know, I'm, I did, do let them know that I'm creating a poem and it's going to be for teenagers, what subject matters. And do you know what came up a lot? Suicide, depression. Suicide, anxiety. number one. It's, it was, I just said, wow, you know, again. So the book reflects those topics for those young people. Um, so the podcast is going to be starting on the 31st of May. And the first episode is the beginning. So it's the what, why, when, and how they can get involved, listeners can get involved. So it's just a little bit about me and my story about, you know, when I started writing, what inspired me, who inspired me. It was Maya Angelou, by the way, that inspired oh, okay. me. Like, All right. eight. And um, the reasons why I started writing, and then it just goes into what I would like the podcast to be. And so after every episode, what will follow the episode the following week will be the listener's voice. So that, that, is is awesome. when, that is when my listeners can send me poems, thoughts of the mind and anything else. And I will be sharing it in along with extracts from my books with the world. So those that will that will happen. So that's how I'm hoping that that will work in terms of the interaction with my listeners. Well, let me know if you need me. You want me to interview you for your show. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much. I will definitely let you know. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, so did you self-publish? I did. I chose to self-publish. I was doing a lot of research. And after doing the research, I said, you know what, Jackie, you can do this. You can do this. So I then decided to go and research, went and paid for a, a book coach for just for an hour, just to speak to him to see what information he had. Went and done some more research, looked at YouTube channels, and then download, went and uploaded my book onto um, Kindle Direct Publishing. So it's, it's self-published. So I, I'm gonna stick with that route at the moment because I'm enjoying learning. Yeah. I'm enjoying exploring and, um, you know, I'm going to stick to that route at the moment. One of the books, um, well, as well as the poetry books, I've written a children's book. <laughs> I've had a children's book unpublished for 39 years. Ah, oh, wow. Wow. And I, and at the age of, I think I was probably 13 years old and I was asked by my teacher to do a project. And the project was all around stories. 
So I produced a book and I done all the illustrations by myself, which um, I'm not an artist. I am definitely not an artist. So I produced a book called The Farmer and the Potato Men. <laughs> okay. So, um, as I said, I've had it for 39 years. It got passed on to my daughter and then my son. And then I took it out the other day and read it to my grandson and he chuckled. So that inspired me. That chuckle inspired me to go and get it published. So I've connected with an illustrator and they are illustrating the book as we speak. And it's going to be um, in its raw form. Um, well, not in its raw form, but illustrated and published um, within the next month. That is awesome. That's what started my series, the Comfort Legacy series with my grandson, who I told him a story when I was four years old, his age, and he loved it. And that started this whole process, um, wrote the book and got, got it illustrated. And he is the co-author. So he loves it. He loves so it. Beautiful. And so beautiful, so awful with your grandson. It feels awesome. He loves it. He doesn't want to turn five years old, but <laughs> so instead of having a birthday, we're going to have an MJ day. Oh, so lovely. because he doesn't want to turn five, he does, he wants to stay four and oh. and relish in his authorship. <laughs> I think so. that's wonderful. And I, I, I remember seeing from your um, social media platforms and it just so happened that I was speaking to my daughter the week before I connected with you and just said to her, oh, I'd love to do, you know, co-author, have my grandson as a co-author. And that just sparked me. Once I met you and you inspired me, I went and had the weekend with my grandson, spoke to him. He came up with a storyline. I've, yes. actually, I've actually written the book already. <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to, again, just go and get an illustrator to illustrate, do the illustrations for me and have the book published by the time he goes into infants. We call it infants over here, the reception class. And oh. um, so that will be a talking point for him. That will be awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Because, oh, yes, he's going to love it. And um, how I actually do it with MJ was that when I told him the story, I asked, I said, okay, I'm going to tell you a story about a time when this happened to me. And then he'll say, oh, you want to tell me a story about it? And then I put that part in the front of the book. I tell him the story. And at the end of the book, I ask him in every story, how did you like our story, my story? And then he lets me know how he likes the story <laughs> or what I should have done or the moral of the story and how I could have, um, you know, did something better. Like grandma, you forgot, you burned the popcorn, you know, <laughs> during our experiment. So yeah. he adds, you know, um, commentary. So that makes That's him the co-author and he loves That's to edit. Funny. No, you spelled this wrong. <laughs> That is so beautiful. That's so beautiful. He catches our typos. So, oh, wow. Well, Miss Jackie, I have loved, loved, loved having you here. Before we go, is there any last words that you'd like to share with our audience about um, publishing or um, getting started on writing, whatever your, your heart desires? I would say if you ever felt um, uh, just overwhelmed with emotions, put it on paper. If you don't use pen and paper, type it into your phone or on, on your laptop or your computer. And that's where I write on my mobile. It goes into my notes and then goes to my laptop because I can find a quiet space. So I would say, follow your heart. And if you are creating poetry, poetry doesn't always have to rhyme. Don't get me wrong, the rhyming poems are, you know, you know they have that fun element to them. However, writing from the heart and that's you know i would say write from the heart and just express your emotions through words so if you're looking to publish i would say go for it go for it don't let anything stop you don't let anyone tell you that you cannot i think we get told a lot that we cannot do this we cannot do that but actually we can we can and we're worthy and we deserve it so Absolutely. just go for it and, um, you know, take your time. It's not a race. 
it took me 38 years to publish a book. So when you're ready, but have them there, have them there and let them inspire you inspire. as well as others. Awesome, awesome. We'll do, we'll do. Oh, thank you so much. And we will talk again. I appreciate your coming on and being early <laughs> and ready to go. <laughs> Timings, I'm still trying to get used to all these different time zones. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's awesome, though. It's awesome. But you were determined, and we are here, and I'm so happy to have had you, and it, it's been a blessing to me, and I'm sure it'll be a blessing to others that hear it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Stay blessed. Thank you. Will do.